is finally here and well it's time to start doing my top 10 list tons of lists coming out soon but today we're going to be starting with our top 10 best films of 2018 so let's get straight to it and guys thank you guys so much for clicking on this video if you guys are new here consider hitting that like and subscribe button and also commenting and making sure to let me know what your guys's top 10 favorite films of 2018 are remember these are my opinions so if your film doesn't make my list for any reason it's not because i didn't like it if you heard a good review from me earlier this year about it, I probably wanted to put it in here, but there were so many good films. And I know we say this every year, but this list was definitively hard. I had to really dive in and say, okay, what films did I rewatch? What films did I want to go and rewatch? What films really just struck with me and stuck with me the whole entire year? And I had to narrow it down to 10. But before we get to those 10, let's talk about my honorable mention. So my honorable mention. So for honorable mention wise, uh, I'm going to go a couple of them. A uh, searching was one Mandy widows Roma. I was super close to putting in there. Creed two Incredibles two upgrade has stuck with me forever. Hereditary. Uh, that it kills me. I didn't put hereditary in there, but the ending, it just never works for me. If Bill Street could talk is a film that has won my heart over. If you, you need to go see it, it's in theaters everywhere now. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the favorite. Yeah, I know. I said it was one of my favorite films, but I only saw it once, so I can't really bump it in there. I need to see it again. Suspiria, this close, this close. And, of course, the one that kills me not to put it in here, but I really love this film, and it's Paddington 2. I want to talk about Paddington 2 for a little bit, because I, I never really loved the first Paddington. I thought it was fine. It was cute. Paddington 2 really just changed the dynamic of how well done this franchise is, and Paddington 2 was excellent i i wish i could it, it pretty much ties for number 10 but my real number 10 is eight you give is a film that i had no interest in seeing at all this year but when i ended up seeing it for the first time i just fell in love with every single aspect of this film and i've seen it three times and every single time it's still just a powerful punch in the gut of a type of movie with these powerful performances from not just Amanda Starberg but mostly her father Russell Hornsby who we always see playing in these other roles in these small centric roles but this is the first role where he, for me he really stuck out and I was like who is that guy what's his name I need to remember his name and it is a shame that this film is not getting any Oscar talk it's a shame that he's not getting any Oscar talk for best supporting actor I personally think he is the best supporting actor of 2018 and The Hate You Give in general is just, again, it's a film that's based off a YA novel that we know how YA novel turns. They usually just turn in cliche and cheesy and don't work, but this one was powerful. You could feel the passion behind the scenes. You could feel it all. And it's just one of those films that I think, again, is one of the most underrated films of 2018, but also one of my favorites of 2018. Coming in, number nine is probably the film that I've seen the most this year, and that is Game Night. Game Night is easily the best comedy i've seen in the last couple of years even over girls trip which i thought girls trip was a blast game night is one of those films that i have probably watched it within the last couple of weeks i probably watched it five times either showing someone watching it by myself putting it on the background but just ending up sitting down to watch the whole entire thing it's a film that has excellent twists throughout it that you don't see coming it's a film that you can even go back into and when those twists are coming up you can see where like oh i should have caught that oh i should have caught that one of those films that if someone's like oh what film should i go buy what film should i go rent what's a good date night film game night it's one of the best films for any type of scenario you can do Please go and search it out. It's an excellent, 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 amazing film that has stuck with me. And I've, again, I've watched it so many damn times. Number eight is Ready Player One. Now, again, not everyone likes this film. I've actually seen it on a couple of the top 10 worst films of the year. This is not a worst film, in my opinion. For me, this is one of the first films in a while where it brings back that Spielberg magic of the original films that he made when I was younger. You know, like the bringing back Indiana Jones vibes to me, like that kind of magic when I was watching Spielberg movies for the first time when I was younger. And Ready Player One again brought back those memories. Again, this is a lot of nostalgic trip. Maybe that's why I like it so much. But again, this is the film that I saw, open, I saw at a press screen. I went and saw it opening night, 
and constantly I've seen this film multiple times throughout this year, and it's an energetic blast where, yeah, the characters aren't fully fleshed out. Yes, the novel is better, but it's definitely a world that I love being engrossed in and wanting to go back into. I want a sequel right away with Spielberg directing. I want to get sucked back into this world with these characters, learn more about them, and just everything going on. The fact that they even have a shining sequence in here is one of the reasons that this film gets a plus one from me and automatically gets thrown in. Also, one of the best racing sequences ever created is in here. Here, and some of the visual effects in here just still are jaw-dropping to me. Coming in at number seven is Mission Impossible Fallout. Now, Mission Impossible Fallout is a film that, again, I... Woo! Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> this is the best Mission Impossible film. Um, it has the best score out of all the Mission Impossible films. It For me, it has the second best villain in any of the Mission Impossible films. I'm not going to say the villain i'm not going to get into that stuff and i'm not really going to get into the story because i don't want to give spoilers away but again mission impossible is again also one of the best action films since mad max fury road which is in my top 20 of all time i love mad max fury road the action sequences are taken up a notch the performances are taking up a notch this film just feels like at all angles there are stakes to be had and i that that's some of the reasons why i love mission impossible fallout so much tom cruise gives his best performance as ethan hunt I mean, and probably just in his career. They really went for it in this one. Christopher McQuarrie nailed it. I'm just blown away by how good Mission Impossible Fallout is. It's a film that it's so far into the franchise that at this time there's kind of starts to lose steam, but in fact, it's just gaining steam. It never feels like it's jumping the shark like a Fast and Furious film. It feels all believable. All the stunts are so realistic. And really, when you look at this film, some of the best moments of the year have happened. Henry Cavill shotgunning, cocking his fist to get ready to punch someone in the bathroom. The halo jump scene, the helicopter flight scene. It's all adrenaline filled. And it's one of those films that if you did not see in theaters this year, you missed out, my sir. Coming in number six is going to be Annihilation. Now, this is a movie that I saw three times opening weekend. Once at a press screening the rest that weekend and then once on Monday to prepare for a spoiler review for this film. And I have continuously watched this film. I've seen this film about seven times this year after buying it on Blu-ray. And it's a film that I gravitate and always drastically go to. Not just for that creepy bear scene, which is one of the best scenes in all of 2018. Um, maybe it made my list, maybe it didn't. But it's a film that every single inch of this film makes me compelled to analyze it and look into it. It's one of the films that really just, I love Ex Machina. I still like Ex Machina more, but I think down the road, Annihilation might actually kick Ex Machina out of the spot it is and bump it down because I think Annihilation is an excellent film. It's a trip of itself. And it's one of those unique trips that I do have to recommend if you did not see Annihilation. I know not this film wasn't for everyone. I know a lot of people were disappointed in it, but you have to at least give it another try. I think some people were expecting something different. I got exactly what I wanted from Annihilation. and I still find myself amazed and engrossed within to this film. And at number five is one of the most relatable films for me this year, and that is mid-90s. This film was written and directed by Jonah Hill and Sir Sonny Sujik. And again, the it's not just because of the great soundtrack, but it's about young skate borders just trying to get out going on in california and it really reminded me as a kid because i used to skate and i sucked at it well sometimes but i sucked at it for the most part and i felt relatable to these kids because some of them are really good and then i mean our main hero sucks at it and i just was that kid when i was younger i was that younger child and everything he does i was doing for the most part or in different circumstances and mid 90s just comes to the point where it's just a fantastic coming of age film that's brilliantly directed and brilliantly written that just feels all the most relatable to what it is and every single aspect of it i love the ending i love every single aspect i love the score i love the soundtrack it's one of those films that, again it's it comes to the point where it's so high on my list because of the relatability and how much that I could relate to this film and reminded me of my childhood. Mid 90s struck a damn good core with me and Jonah Hill automatically deserves this to be at my number five. Thank you, Jonah, for directing and writing this film. Coming in at number four, The Star is Born. I love this movie. It's the fourth remake of these. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe the third, I don't know. I've seen two of the other ones. This is definitively the best one for me. Bradley Cooper is phenomenal in here, gives the best performance of his career. He directs the film brilliantly, as I can say. Great writing. Lady Gaga, I still think, is one of the best performances of the year as well. It's just so, so damn good. The music I listen to every day in my car. Um, what is there not to say about Star is Born? 
I, I think this film is one of the contenders for best picture due to a lot of reasons. The editing, the cinematography, the way it looks, the story, the emotional beats. It broke me down and inspired me and just just did so much for me. And A Star is Born, I think, will raise a lot of stars. I think Lady Gaga is a star, again, who's reborn. Um, we've seen her in music career, but now in acting career, I think she'll be pushed more into the limelight. I want to see her more act. Yeah, some people complain, oh, well, the performance was made for her, but she still made it her own. And there's some moments in here where she's singing and the emotion coming out of her. That, that takes a lot. And that's what makes a really good performance. And I think that's what people missed out on. A Star is Born is seriously a fantastic film that has struck my core. It's an emotional film that I absolutely enjoyed this year. And number three, though, is going to be Avengers Infinity War. I love, love, love this film so much. Multiple times again. Seen this film like 12, 13 times ever since I got on Blu-ray. Watched it four times that weekend. Love to show people Avengers of any War. One of the best theater experiences this year, especially with me and my friends sitting next to each other. We've seen every MCU film to date, opening night, and seeing this film early was just a blast. We freaked out. We loved it. We had such enjoyment out of this movie. Ah, and Thanos is one of the best villains of 2018, if so, and he's just so damn badass, the way that he kicks a lot of ass, and some of the best action sequences, again, I get it, this story isn't fully structured, but if you've followed all these films like me, if you're a geek culture like me, to the MCU, to the comic book films, Infinity War was everything I wanted it to be and more, it is essentially the Empire Strikes Back of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Coming at number two, though, is Green Book, it's a film that I heard lots of great things going into, and the this film blew away all my expectations. It's heartwarming. It's it gives me those heartwarm, fizzy feelings, but it's also dramatic. It hits some racial tones that needed to be hit and established within a film and brings up certain issues that I don't think other films have brought up perfectly. Yeah, there's some films that do do it better, and this is a buddy driving film, and it, yeah, a lot of people say it's like Driving Miss Daisy, but it's so much different than that, and I know there's a lot of controversy about this film, but still, for me personally, I found Green Book to be one of the films that when someone asks me what is a film I should go see I automatically reference Green Book and say hey it's still in theaters go give it a watch it's not gonna be on DVD and Blu-ray for a while but it's gonna be talked about at the Oscars and I still think Green Book does have a contention for best picture performing it's funny you'll laugh you'll smile you'll cry Green Book brings all the emotions to you and some people might say it's manipulative whatever I love the Green Book it's one of my favorite films of the year coming into my number one favorite film of this year and my what I think might be the best film of 2018. That is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. A film that I remember announced. I had no interest in seeing this film. I was like, that's stupid. I don't need an animated Spider-Man film. Rolled my eyes. Heard some good things going in. I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to be good. Getting a little bit more hype. Went into the film and boom, my expectations flew out the door. Flew out the window and just left the earth completely. I love Into the Spider-Verse. Seen it three times now. I want to see it five more times. I want to buy it on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, whatever I can buy it on to watch it at home every single day for the rest of my life because I think this is the best Spider-Man film. It's funny. It's heartwarming. It's energetic. The action is great. The characters are great. It's inspiring. It's just everything. The gimmicks in here work. Having all these spider people and establishing it into this world, it works. The humor works. The animation, unique amazing some of the best animation i've ever seen great villains great direction everything i wanted in this film and more it is seriously the best film of 2018 for me i'm a diehard spider-man fan he's my favorite superhero and i cannot express enough how giddy i was walking out of this film i have not felt this giddy after a while when i still talk about spider-man i hope people support it please support it i love this film i love 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 spider-man and the spider-verse I'm, I'm just gonna stop talking about it stop watching this video now go please check out the movie it, it's it needs to be shown it needs good word of mouth and spider-man and the spider-verse is essentially one of the best films of this year for me as that is my list i'm curious to hear your guys thoughts down below on yours let's talk about it down below what did you guys agree with mine what do you not and remember this is my opinions these are my top 10 best films of 2018 but i want to hear your guys's if you're new here again hit that like and subscribe button go check out sandwich on films also down below for early movie reviews check out some movie news and even some advanced movie screens that might be coming out that we will be giving away again guys thank you guys so much for watching this and until next time time, stay classy.